Hello, so after a brief break for the midterm exam, we're now back to these um, video lectures. So we are now on the sixth topic for this class, and we're going to leave calculus behind now, and we're going to move on to a new topic, which is going to be about vectors. So you might notice this week there's a few more videos than usual. I think there were eight in total, but don't be too worried about that. That's because I've tried to make them shorter. I decided that shorter videos are probably a bit better and a bit more focused. So there's eight videos, but altogether the total time is more or less the same. Um, and the last two videos this week are kind of optional extras, so they're not necessary for the, the practice sheet or the test, but they're to give you a bit more of a deep understanding about what vectors are. Okay. So here in this first video, then, I'm just going to define what vectors are and some of their most important properties. Okay, so physically we think of a vector as being something which has a direction and a certain length. So if I start from a point here, a vector is some kind of arrow coming out of this point. Okay, so we can call this the vector v, for example. So it has a certain direction and a certain length. Okay, and obviously there are different vectors you can have, so I could also have a vector w is coming out something like this. Now the important mathematical properties of vectors are that you can add and subtract them. Well that's one of the important mathematical properties. So for example if I have these two vectors v and w then I can form the vector v plus w in the following way. I take the vector w here and I move its image up to the end of v that gives me a vector like that. And if I combine these two, so v to here and then w down to there, then the result is this vector here. And this dark blue vector I define to be the vector v plus w. OK, so an important fact is that vectors can be added. So you can define addition on vectors. Another important property of vectors is that can, they can be multiplied by scalars. So scalar is just another word for a number in effect, more or less. So it means that if we have a vector w like this, then we can define the vector 2w. So here, if this is w, the vector 2w is pointing in the same direction, but has twice the length. So this vector here is the vector 2w. Okay. Similarly, you can define the vector minus w that has the same length, but just pointing in the opposite direction. Okay. So that's another important thing we can do with vectors. We can add them together, and we can multiply them by numbers. Okay. So Mathematicians define vectors in this way. They just say something is a set of vectors, provided that you can define some notion of addition and some notion of multiplication by scalar on these things. There's a few other conditions. For example, uh, you have to specify what happens if you add two vectors together and then multiply by some number a, and this should be the same as multiplying by the number a first and then adding the vectors together and so on. So if you look in the mathematics book they give you about 10 rules something like this which tell you exactly how the vectors addition and the vectors scalar multiplication should work. Okay? But for physics we can just think about them in this way as objects which have some direction and some length. OK, so you might be used to writing vectors as something like this, 1, 3, 0, or so on. So how does a vector representation like this relate to what I've described up here? Okay, And the relationship between a vector like this and a vector something like this is made through what is called a basis, so choosing a basis. This basis is an important word. 
in the theory of vectors. So what does this mean? Suppose I've got some vector v like this. So I'm going to consider in two dimensions, so just on this piece of paper. So a basis is any choice of two vectors in these two dimensions which don't point in the same direction. So for example, I can take the vector this way and a second vector this way. Okay? And this one I will call the vector i, and this one I will call the vector j. So these i and j are then called basis vectors, and we usually denote them with a hat instead of an arrow for some reason. And if I have these basis vectors, then I can make any other vector like v by adding them together and multiplying them by scalars. So in this example, if I want to get v, then I have to do i, then i, then i, and then I have to do j, and then j. So I can get to v by adding together three lots of i and two lots of j. So we can write this in the following way, v equals 3i plus 2j. And provided you always use the same basis, then you can kind of forget about what i and j are, and you can instead just write this in terms of the numbers 3 and 2. Okay. And when you see a vector represented like this, that's what it means. It means they've chosen a, some basis vectors i, j, or in this case it's a three-dimensional vector, so you choose three basis vectors, and then the vector 3, 2 means three lots of i plus two lots of j. Now, if I chose a different basis, then I could have got different numbers here. So this representation of the vector v does depend upon the choice of basis. So if I do an example of that, so I take the same vector v, or as close as I can draw it, and instead now I'll take the vectors j pointing up something like this. So I'll call it j prime to show it's different from this one and I'll take another vector i, something like this, i prime. Okay. So again, in this case, we can still write down v in terms of these two vectors, so it's going to be something like i prime plus j prime plus j prime. Okay, so I haven't quite drawn it right, but close enough. i just extend this one a little bit. There we go. Now they're the same. So again, in this new basis, i prime and j prime, we can write v equals i prime plus 2 j prime. And if you forget about the basis, you can write this as 1, 2. Okay? So in both cases, it's the same vector, but it's represented by different numbers here because the choice of basis is different. Okay. So that's what a basis is. So this set i, j is called a basis if every other vector v can be written as v is equal to some number, let's call it x times i, plus some other number, let's call it y times j. Okay, and then we can associate this with the numbers x and y in this way. Okay, now the number of vectors you need here to make a basis gives you what's called the dimension of the space. The number of basis vectors. is called the dimension of the vector space. Okay. So as far as this piece of paper is concerned, I can write any vector in terms of these two vectors i and j. So that means that this piece of paper is two-dimensional because it has two basis vectors, which we all know, right? Now suppose I didn't want to give a vector on this piece of paper, but I wanted to describe a vector pointing out of this piece of paper, something like this. You can see that on the camera. So then I need three basis vectors, because I need 
to tell you how to move horizontally on the paper and then vertically on the paper and then finally I need a third basis vector to tell you to move up as well. Okay. So for a three-dimensional vector as the name suggests you need three basis vectors one this way, one that way and then one moving up. Okay, so if I draw a picture of that you've got the piece of paper like this and you've got the two basis vectors i and j on the piece of paper you need a final vector telling you how to move up like this this vector in three dimensions is usually given the label k okay. so then we have the i j k is a basis in three dimensions okay so that defines for you what a basis is now some basis choices are better than others and if you look at these two examples this original basis i and j has some special properties the lengths of i and j are the same and the angle between them is 90 degrees here okay. this is not true of this basis i prime j prime the lengths are different and the angle between them is not 90 degrees now if your basis has this property so the angle between all the vectors is 90 degrees and the length of all of the basis vectors is 1 so if we imagine that this length is 1 and this length is 1 then the basis has a special name. It's called orthonormal. And in physics and in other sciences as well, we tend to use orthonormal basises, orthonormal bases, whenever possible. So let me write that. So a basis is called orthonormal if all basis vectors i, j and can be more if you're in higher dimensions if they all have length equal to 1 and angles of 90, deg 90 degrees between them okay. so with this definition of orthonormal, this first basis here is an orthonormal basis, but this second basis is not an orthonormal basis. Okay, so just a couple of words on notation to go along with this definition of a basis. So often you're interested in the length of a vector. So the length of a vector v is written like this put the vector v inside some vertical lines okay that means length of vector v so for example an orthonormal basis we should have that the length of i and the length of j should be equal to 1 okay the second point is this 90 degrees if v and w have a 90 degree angle between them then they are there's some words for this so two vectors which have a 90 degree angle between them are called either perpendicular p e r p n d p e n d i c d q l it's hard to spell and write at the same time perpendicular or orthonorm orthogonal It's another word for it. Okay. Okay, so I've defined lots of words on this, so let me just say them. So, like, so I've said what vectors are, these are things you can add multiply by scalars. I've defined what a basis is, I've defined what the dimension of the space is in terms of the basis. I've defined what orthonormal means. I've told you the notation for the length of a vector, and I've given you these special words perpendicular or orthogonal if the vectors have 90 degree angle between them. Okay.
So you can represent perpendicular vectors. Um, I've run out of space, sorry. But one way you can represent perpendicular vectors, which I will use in these videos, is as follows. V and this symbol to mean perpendicular, and then W. Okay? So this means V is perpendicular to W, which means the angle between V and W is 90 degrees. Right, so I think these are all the properties I wanted to say in this introductory video. So in the next videos, I'm going to talk about some ways you can multiply vectors together too.